What up, guys? This is basically my review on this theater, the Auto Nation IMAX theater, and my review of Dunkirk at the same time. I will go as far to say that there, there is not much better. There's just there's not much better that you're gonna get other than this theater. If you live anywhere in Florida, it's really worth taking the trip. I mean, unless you're like five hours away or, I mean you know something just ridiculous where you, maybe you'd have to stay at a hotel I mean I'm not going to say that you need to do that but say like you're an hour away 100% worth it absolutely 100% worth it I wasn't even sure myself that I was going to take the trip but it was really partially because I have an older car at this point now it's a 2007 uh, Subaru and it sort of needs tires, and it sort of needs, um, uh, what do you call that, wheel bearings in one of the tires, so it's kind of annoying to drive, especially far distance. I would be annoyed. It's not so bad uh, around town or, you know, you know, 12 miles here or 12 miles there, but if you're going to go like 50 miles, it's a little annoying, but I got a chance to use someone else's car, uh, my girlfriend's car. Uh, uh, pa parents went out of town, so we used their car, and in that car, you know, driving, it was perfectly fine, the traffic wasn't too bad, going there, uh, a couple of mishaps here and there, but we got there on time, five minutes to spare, now, the funny thing about this theater is they tell you to get there, like, really early, but this is for, like, optimal show times, where say it's like the Star Wars movies or, you know, um, the Hollywood blockbusters on like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's when you need to get there early or pre-order your tickets. And, you know, you're going to want to line up because it, they don't have reserved seating. And, and it's not really set up for that. So, you know, it is what it is. So, let's talk about the theater itself. Um, because the only other theater that I've ever been to was the Palm Beach IMAX and the Frank's Cinnable IMAX. And on my old account, I w shared my thoughts on those two uh, screens. But since this video is new, I'm going to have to talk about them again really quick. So the Palm Beach IMAX is a fairly big IMAX. And it is not a true five or six story IMAX, but it, it is, however, fairly large. And the format is, it is a very square screen. So whenever you see Hollywood movies, a lot of times that aren't filmed in IMAX, it letterboxes it. And you can tell that there's a lot of the top and bottom missing. Although in on, on this uh, screen, when there's like a letterbox section... There is a really tall, empty space at the top and bottom, but you're so close to the screen that, well, you're not really that close, but it's just so big that it feels close. So, it's just the letterboxing is more prominent, but it doesn't really bother you because it, your, your eyes just are, are looking straight ahead at the film, and you're not really looking at the dark screens because the new... IMAX laser projection has such good black levels that you know the letterboxing is not as noticeable as it would be on other um, theaters so it's like I have a lot to go over in such a short amount of time I want to make this video and I'll go over what they say here real quick is that and this is written you know or, well they fixed it recently but it, it is now a 12 channel surround system where they have the typical um, speakers here. I will show you quickly in this video. So you have these speakers, and these are all fully the IMAX speakers that you will see on like the very newest of screens. They're not any old technology. They use um, what I believe here is this is four boxes of the 12-inch woofers, um, four 12 inch woofers in each section so there's like one two three four i believe these uh these little pieces here in the video it's hard to see 
but I believe those are like sort of locking mechanisms either screwing them in, into the next one or something it, it, it it's hard to tell but like I saw the boxes 412s would not be this long considering how big this person is right here so I pretty much concluded they have 16 woofers uh, so yeah you can imagine that it's got a lot of bass and uh, if the theater was actually bigger like if it went back further I could see them even adding two more boxes if they really wanted to but it doesn't need it now all this treatment is for like sound and insulation which a lot of LIMAX screens won't do because it's basically what all the LIMAX screens are is they they may or may not have been built from scratch but they were not meant to be like true IMAX screens and a lot of times have been neglected and or they aged past certain technologies um, because the IMAX in Palm Beach I believe does not have these speakers even though I can't really see them um, but I can see the rear speakers and they look nothing like this they're just a basically it looks like a it's what it looks like to me is a, it looks like a uh, either a 12 or a 15 inch woofer um, with a tweeter above it and that's it these have like four proprietary speakers or something or other with horns popping out of the middle to do very specific things uh, as far as like the sound array and um, It, it, now this uh, theater even has a laser projector so it's absolutely ridiculous now what I don't understand is it says 114 speakers I don't, I don't, I don't understand that it's in, a, in what world is it 115 or what is it what did I say la, 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 la. yeah 114 okay 114 I mean are they counting like each woofer each tweeter each mid range I don't know because there's what this video does not show is the they they have added um atmos like dolby atmos like speakers which is brand new to this theater and has just been recently added which is really cool so now let's jump to the frank cinnable um in del rey i i can never recommend going there because the palm beach one is better has more bass it's louder um now here's the, this is a funny discrepancy between the two Frank's Cinnable has better vocals and and I would say mid-range and surround as far as being a little bit more pristine in quality but it's a tad more quiet and the bass is much quieter than Palm Beach so that's really the and, and oh and when I saw Batman vs Superman there the left projector was was not working properly it was it was it was flickering and when you're watching a movie that's supposed to be in 3d and you have a flickering it's nearly unwatchable because you're forced to wear the 3d glasses or the images blurry yet the calibration was was either it was either they, they said out the calibration was had messed up like their story was basically that someone opened the door during the IMAX calibration and it was causing some disruption now I don't believe it because someone's gonna really leave it like that all day long like you can't recalibrate it uh, you know during a time when the movie's not playing like it just doesn't make sense it, it, to me it didn't make sense plus like if it was just miscalibrated it just wasn't the 3d was just not only broken it wasn't working at all like the, there was no 3d to the movie but yet you still had to wear the glasses or it would be blurry so it was very strange that I've never ever had that problem and like I said the flickering so I, I actually think that one of the projectors was on the fritz and I don't know I was just getting excuses thrown at me I even was trying to you know I was trying to tell people hey you know something's wrong with this this movie and the funny thing is guys 
I'm I'm so into movies and I and I so want the experience to be the best possible, but yet nobody seemed to give a crap. Like I was the only one that really cared in a theater that had at least at least was half full of people. And um but yeah, so let's go on to Dunkirk. Now, there's been people who have given it negative reviews on IMDb saying like there's no plot, this and that. This movie is meant to be seen in the absolute best IMAX theater you can find. And if you can't find the best IMAX, I mean, you'll have to settle for the LIMAX. But as long as the sound is good and and there's a lot of bass, I think you'll be okay. Except I have heard that it's it pushes the boundaries of sound um, just as much as Interstellar. Um, I would say actually a little less because Interstellar was just... Um, the soundtrack using the pipe organs you know pipe organs are known to push serious air like down to like five hertz stuff you can't hear but it just it'll make the woofers go insane but as far as dunkirk goes is uh it just reaches like quiet sections and then just boom instant loudness and then a lot of bass and i mean i could believe me i could feel the bass in my pants um i and one one time during the soundtrack, uh, there's like a heart pumping uh, score by Hans Zimmer, uh, where it's just it's beating like a like a like a drum, and you could feel it in your chest. It was, it was pretty crazy. So the movie does skip around in the timeline a little bit, but I mean, you you got to be stupid not to know like what's going on. I mean, you can piece it together by the end of the film what what happened. And I and I know I think I know why he did it that way. Um, I'm not gonna like say you know give my opinions on why he did that way. I'm not Christopher Nolan, but I think he wanted, um, in my opinion, uh, people are saying that like you can't connect to any of the characters, like, and that's true. And I think he wants you to connect to the experience. He doesn't want you to connect to one person. He doesn't want you to connect to the, like this or that or favor someone. He shows a person. He shows something happened to them. And then he goes into a completely different scenario. And he wants you to say, hey, like, what if I'm in this boat, like, right now? Or what about, what about if I'm in this plane right now? Like, you're having a completely different visceral experience. Um, and, and, like, everyone's in the same, like, war there's different experiences everyone's having and they're all like either horrific or they're heroic or you know i'm not going to give away any spoilers but there is kind of like some there's some depressing stuff in the movie um but it's it's just about experiencing it like you've never experienced it before because he doesn't tell a story so much as he's telling like it's like it's like near documentary style but just with like you know with with his style of filmmaking like um i don't mean style i mean like nolan's f- like uh god for some reason i just can't think of what i want to say but like you know like how each director has a style of filmmaking i'm not i'm not saying the movie style i'm saying the director's style so his style of filmmaking is similar to that of any of his other films except like in like think about inception he told a completely crazy story and it's and and it was like levels of this and levels of that and you had to follow everything and it was complicated this is as simple as it gets this is like wiping all that complication away and he films it gorgeous it, there, there's breathtaking moments in this film where you're like wow like you, you you wish you could you almost wish the movie was longer like I was never bored and it was like I mean there's ju- there's just some epic scenes in the movie that like you're, you're just blown away by like the realism I mean nothing seemed CGI with with the screen being so large, I felt like you would know if there was CGI in it. It honestly seemed like there was nothing CGI. Everything seemed 100% real. 
it, it almost made um you know certain scenes in other movies just like a uh, uh, a plane would crash or or you know an explosion would happen and it just it just pales in comparison into you know in a certain way because it just feels so real you feel like you're you're there you don't feel like you're in a movie it didn't feel like a movie like i just got done seeing it you know uh I don't even know, uh, 12 hours ago, right? 12 hours ago it started. And it's like you, you lived the movie. You lived it. You didn't, you don't come home and you don't get to like contemplate the scenes of the movie or, or even really discuss the plot because there's really no plot. It's just like, but you lived the, 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 the experience. So it's it's so weird. And, and it's like, it, it may not be for everybody. That's fine. But I see where he was going with it and, it. and it makes complete sense to me why he did it the way he did it. If he would have like convoluted a story in there, I think it would have it would have made the movie worse. Because take Pearl Harbor. You know, Michael Bay... I don't think Michael Bay wrote it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to double check. I, I, I'm almost positive he didn't write it. And he doesn't write, but he directed it. But his idea came from I want to follow a bomb all the way down like he had good ideas for the film and a lot of that movie was breathtaking as well um you know and Hans Zimmer did that score as well but the difference is is that there's a big convoluted story going on that's fake so it's like you you follow this love story and that's what you know a lot of people didn't like about Pearl Harbor is that a lot of the fake stuff was going on this movie is not fake it does not feel fake in any way you're just like there. You're watching something go down. So that's basically my review of Dunkirk. Just I give it a ten out of ten. Tech, technologically, it's just the achievement. He, the stuff he he gets away with. I just, it just couldn't have been easy. I I can't even imagine strapping a camera to a plane and it all working out perfectly. With a, you know so many things can go wrong. How many takes would it? Uh, did he need? It, it, it's just crazy. Because that's how my mind, that's how my mind works. I don't think oh the, there's no characters to to connect with. Uh, it's crap. Somebody gives it one star. I mean, given it, given it that a one star means you're a douchebag. It's, you're just a complete douchebag if you give that movie a one star. Um, I fully believe it. Either you're a douchebag or you're a troll, one or the other. So yep, that's the theater I saw it in. This is it, and I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, another thing about the IMAX guys, uh, my, I, I find it really sad that a lot of IMAX theaters, um, you know, they technically have the IMAX name, but it, it really could just be anything. It could just be a, a, a big screen. That's it. You get a big screen, you get some 2K, you know, projectors, which are actually completely out of um style not out of style. I don't even know I'm tired guys I got like five hours of sleep you can hear my voice um but apparently 4k projectors are like what's in right now you either got film which not many use anymore or you got like the digital 4k projectors um but the the older the older IMAX use 2k so at the Palm Beach when I go to, that's still, I believe, um, you get two of the 2K projectors, but this AutoNation one is two 4K projectors, and they're laser, so it's completely different. Um, if you can see it, great. I, I don't know how many people are subbed to me that are from Florida, but it is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think if I have anything to say about it other than just how amazing it was. Um, like another thing. Uh, old THX certified theaters, see, they used to um, be very um, strict on how the theater needed to sound, how much bass, how much, you know, clarity, and the the room had to be treated for to be quiet. And this is what I bet you, you a lot of guys um, notice in your theater that if, if there's air conditioning noises or whatever, and I can confirm that at the Palm Beach place, it's not dead quiet. Like, if a quiet scene is going on, you may hear air conditioning. 
or the bass might actually vibrate the whole theater, which it does. Because um, during Interstellar, when that pipe organ was coming on, I, I was I heard vibrations, like nonstop vibrations. And I don't know what was vibrating, but it was it sounded like it was the walls or something. This this theater, um, the Auto Nation Theater, was at one point in the theater. There's something that happens near the end of the movie where it's like dead silence. Um, and it was a very strange scene, but it just it goes dead silent for a second, and it was it was it was really strange. But yeah, this theater it can go from full blasting to dead quiet. So that's my review of that theater is ten out of ten, um, and my review of the Dunkirk is a ten out of ten. And I hope you guys enjoyed this theater, and maybe you learned something. Take it easy.